Hey guys, welcome back to our renovation series. I'm so excited to finally be sharing with you the finished house. Over the next few weeks, I'll be showing you all the rooms along with lots of DIYs. Head over to the blog to see more. Thank you so much for tuning into another one of our renovation series. Today we're going to be talking about the living space. By opening up the house, we've been able to create a uh, really versatile living space, which is centered around the kitchen here. We have a, a lounge room at one end and a dining area on the deck at the other. So basically we were able to open up the house and create a space that you really want to be in. And you can have a few people in one end and a few people in the other and someone cooking. <laughs> yes, <You>. me probably. <laughs> Even though there were a lot of issues with the original house, we did want to keep as much of the sort of feel and character of it as we could. So what you probably notice is that a lot of the walls kind of behind us are bowed and a bit wonky, but we love that and we, we think it gives yeah. a lot of character. If you remember, one of the goals for the house was a big open space that flowed through from the living to the kitchen to the outdoor. The original 1871 cottage was just a few pokey rooms, which, if I'm honest, lacked light and space and was pretty depressing. So we knew that we really needed to open up the house. Creating this space involved a lot of changes at the back of the house. First, the house was raised and the existing deck was removed. Actually, it kind of just fell off the back after we lifted the house. Then we took out the back wall of the house. This was kind of sad because it was an original wall and we did want to keep as many original features of the cottage as possible. Once that was done and the extension was put on, we had a big open space to play with. This is the living space and it's really coming together. We've connected the outdoor patio area, the kitchen dining and the lounge into one big room so that it, it makes the house feel a lot bigger. Ben and I spent a lot of time working out the best way to configure this space so it flowed really well, making it great for living and also for entertaining. So this is the living, dining and outdoor space and we wanted it to really open with a lot of airflow and just like a really great space to hang out in. So basically this is going to be the shared kind of dining and kitchen area. Cupboards here, really beautiful big dining table here and a kitchen that runs along the wall here. So keeping it pretty simple, kind of stripping everything back, only things that we need are going to go in this space. You can see they've got pretty far, really all they need to do now is stain the floor, paint the walls, put in the kitchen and this space will be done. On one end of the room there's a simple lounge space. It's not massive but the house has two other outdoor living spaces, so it worked for us. We made the focal point for this space that beautiful original wall with the exposed beams. All it needed was a freshen up with some white paint. You'll notice that a lot of the walls are a little bit wonky, but I love that feel of the old house. For the decor in the lounge, we tried to keep it fairly simple. We put together this custom media console using two vintage cabinets, one that we painted ourselves. That's because we couldn't really find anything that we liked. I picked this mid-century inspired sofa from Lounge Lovers because I was really into the linen fabric. And turns out it perfectly separates the kitchen from the lounge room. Mid-century furniture, colourful textiles and plants help to create a cosy and bright feel in this space. Moving through to the kitchen, as I mentioned in a previous video, Ben fell head over heels with this industrial bench. So we pretty much planned the whole kitchen around that. We located it in the middle of the kitchen so that it can be used as a kitchen bench as well as a dining table. For the kitchen cabinetry, we chose simple off the rack pieces and used a few DIY tweaks to make it feel bespoke. First, we hand painted them in this amazing shade of green. Guys, the cupboard door that we've done as a tester is finished and I love this colour. I love it so much. It's Bayberry from Hames Paint. I love it. It is going to be perfect. We added a few custom style doorknobs. Overall, I really love this look. Vintage industrial lighting over the table adds a finishing touch to the kitchen. The last section of this space is the deck, one of my favourite spots in the house. I mean, 
Did you even renovate your Australian home if you didn't add a great deck? We really wanted a space to chill out in the afternoons. And I have to say that the neighbour's mango tree is the icing on the cake. A great dining set and a rattan day bed make it the perfect place for some chill time. Thanks so much for tuning into our renovation series. Stay tuned for the next space, the master bedroom. It's a goodie. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Mm -hmm.